Molo San Monani, hello, how's it? <laughs> and welcome to another episode of the Big Daddy Liberty Show. Uh, I hope you guys are um, settled in. If it's cold in your part of the world, I hope you are uh, warmly sn and snug and, you know, you're in front of the heater or whatever, a, a fireplace, wh whatever is keeping you warm tonight. Or I should say whoever is keeping you warm tonight. I know some of you are, um, are Casanovas out here. <laughs> Um, guys, welcome to it. Welcome to the Big Daddy Liberty Show. I have a, a an incredibly exciting show today. I any of you who maybe caught um, Vlog Thirty Three, which I recorded earlier on today, will know that I'm I'm besides myself in in um, in, in glee. Um, and there's, and there's two broad reasons for that, which I will get into. Um, as we get into the show. As usual, I'd like to begin by just uh, welcoming everybody to this live stream. I'll give it a minute or so just to allow people to wrap up what they may have been doing to join us. Um, but uh, with that being said, um, uh, with that being said, you know, uh, shout out to everybody who's on the stream, man. I, I, I see I have a, a bit of an issue here. Um with the live chat. I'm not sure why it is not on. Um, let's see if I can quickly troubleshoot that whilst we wait for more people to join us on the stream. Um, I may not actually be able to troubleshoot this. I have no idea what uh, what's gone wrong, which would be devastating because the whole point of the show <laughs> was to get this engagement. Let's see if we can fix it. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Now I see it. I think. Yes, perfect. Uh, thank you, Anton Peters, for confirming that the chat is working. Uh, guys, again, welcome to the Big Daddy Liberty Show. Um, as I said, I'm just going to give it another 30 seconds to allow folks to join us. Um, how have you guys been? Have you had a good week so far as you enter, what, oh, what's it been now, day three? of level three lockdown <laughs> um, um I, I i i wink like that because i th i think it's becoming patently clear for a lot of us that the the lockdown story and the fear mongering around uh the COVID 19 is beginning to dissipate from the two groups that literally it was their it was their daily bread so to speak um, to fear manga, and that is the media, the mainstream media in this country, and of course, uh, politicians, the political elite, people who essentially um, were very invested in in the the the, the fear mongering, the scaremongering around COVID nineteen. So it's it's been very interesting to notice that they are sort of backing off on the narratives, and in other parts of the world, you know, we've seen a sh a complete shift in in the in the issue of the day the United States being a prominent example, um, you know, where the, the riotous behavior of the looters in that part of the world, uh, I think should be condemned unequivocally by both sides of the politics in, that, in, in America. Uh, th this thing of suggesting that riotous behavior is somehow a reflection of black pain or the George Floyd incident is completely misleading and is actually quite condescending, um, condescending in particular of black Americans who rightly, uh, you know, took this issue up as one of police brutality. And it wasn't just, I, I must add, it wasn't just, uh, you know, black Americans who took this issue up. Anybody who saw those visuals of a police officer literally, you know, pinning down um, Mr. Floyd, w w again, whatever he did, um, is, is not necessarily what I'm prosecuting here. Um, speaking about prosecuting, I do hope those men face prosecution. But nonetheless, what he did wasn't necessarily what, uh, what I'm prosecuting here. It's just the, 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 the sheer wanton disregard for the, the human rights of fellow individuals, the sheer wanton disregard of the excess use of force should never be condoned by any fr freedom-loving individual. A police force is not meant to be a militarized um, uh, you know, asset, uh, a, a militarized blunt asset that politicians use against people. It's never meant to be something like that, especially not in a free society. 
The police force, which is a, a very necessary and legitimate role of the state, by the way, um, ought to be one which essentially um, upholds the law and order, and specifically tied to law and order is the idea of the rule of law. So um, I do hope justice is served in that part of the world in relation to the actual uh, George Floyd case, but more in particular, uh, the, the, the wanton disregard um, for public safety by the looters, the rioters, the people who are now using this incident as cover to destroy institutions in America, to destroy the institutions of the rule of law in America, to destroy the institutions that communities and, and that society depend on, ought to be dealt with um, very swiftly by law enforcement. There, there should not be a, a sitting back of law enforcement just because of what we saw um, in the George, George Floyd um, uh, incident. There should be of what is correct law enforcement that should be out in the streets at the moment uh, restoring law and order so shout out to everybody who is um maybe in the united states who may be on the stream i don't know if there are in america any americans um and i'm sure the the post will show it up here but um i do believe um you know from the very top of you know the political leadership in that part of the world, Donald Trump, um, down to the lowliest of mayors, whether they're Republican or Democrat, that they must restore law and order. That is a matter for, um, you know, the safety of families in that part of the world. Can you imagine um, what it must be like to literally be at your window and watch marauding hordes <clears throat> of mostly young, and it must be said, mostly young, uh, black-clad, uh, black-masked, uh, individuals, uh, many of them belonging to what is now designated rightly so as a terrorist organization of Antifa, um, you know, the people who fashion themselves as being anti-fascist, but fascist, but in, in, in real terms employ actual fascist means um, in that part of the world. So again, I, I must encourage, uh, you know, law enforcement in that part of the world to be, or rather law in order to be restored in that part of the world, um, because you cannot have a free prosperous and property owning society when there is no law and order and specifically the rule of law that is a lesson that the americans should learn and a lesson that we are learning um excuse me here in south africa too uh so yeah um i'm hoping at some stage i can have some of my american friends um you know join me on the show and we can have this conversation um especially the full intricacies of it i'm going to try and keep an eye on the comments uh as i said it will be a bit tricky uh, in the initial sense, um, which brings me to today's show. Um, for once, we're not going to have a, <laughs> a a doom and gloom type show. This is going to be a, a, a at least for me, an exciting show because you know, f for those of you who, um, for those of you who have paid attention to what I do, and you know, you would have seen, for instance, that one vlog I did, which went re relatively viral, where the frustration I was feeling at that moment, and the, 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 the being overwhelmed, if you will, by emotion as to the state of South African families and what politicians in, the, in this country are and were doing to South African families, led me to a point where the anger um, began to, um, to overwhelm me to an extent. But I decided in that vlog, and I shared with you, I think it was vlog 26, I'm not sure, but you're welcome to go to my channel and check out my content. I decided in that vlog purposefully that the days of sitting back, the days of hoping, if you will, against hope at times, that someone else will take up the cudgel and, and, and w do the groundwork and the work necessary to build the free, prosperous, and property-owning society, the, the, the hoping that someone, a, a, a savior, will come and, and lead us, those days are over. And I asked you, uh, the dear viewer, to come to that same realization. And in coming to that realization, I, I said to you, there should be, and I must say this, there should be, um, whether it's at the end of this, uh, clown world that we call lockdown or right through it there should be consequences and repercussions for those who have literally positioned themselves as being the enemy of not only South Africans but particularly South African families there should be consequences and repercussions for those individuals I, and again 
I hold no quarter for any of any 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 of those uh, said foes of South Africans. I hold no quarter. If it is your favorite politician, stuff it. That's not for me to 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 necessarily care about. What I care about is my values, which I will again articulate again in the show, and more importantly. Uh, my ideas, the very ideas that I argue will build the free, prosperous, non-racial and property earning society. So before I really get into any of that, um, allow me just to do some admin, please, people, bear with me. Um, um, allow me to do some admin insofar as thanking um, those who have joined the Liberty Bus who are now donating via my Patreon you guys are literally the backbone of building, as I like to call it, the war chest. Um, you know, the, the, the very funds that get me into the battle of ideas. And tonight you'll hear what exactly these funds will be doing in, in, in a full sense. Uh, the importance of, of, um, of your work. So let me just shout out some people. Please bear with me, guys. It's not going to take too long, I hope. Let me just see from the last point. Um... Okay, here we go. So, major shout out uh, to Mtalala um, for your donation. Heather Collin, shout out to you. Thank you so much. Anita Zondag, thank you for the honor of uh, Leon, thank you very much. Anton Roos, thank you. Uh, appreciate the love. Um, Jen, shout out to you um, for the support. Anita Zondag, um, it's another Zondag. Oh, again. Uh, okay. Um, Shout out to you, Peter Falloon, for your support. I appreciate that. Uh, David Gear, thank you very much. Joubert Malan, barangi for the honor standing. And I must say, thank you now, Joanne Jackson De Freitas. Oh, dynam. Barangi for the honor standing. Oh, thank you sorry, for, uh, very much for the support. Fernando De Arujo. thank you so much for your love. Um, Carla, thank you so, so much for the support. Um, Joanne, oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, that's that's everybody. Thank you so much, guys, for joining the Liberty Bus. Thank you so much for pledging um, uh, support towards the work. So, what is the work? What is the work? What are we going to be doing <clears throat> over the next six months? For those of you who pay attention to what I say and do and blah, 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 you'll know that I've argued that the Big Daddy Liberty Movement, the Liberty Bus that I've now coined it, um, is steaming ahead. But it's not going to be just a, a dog and pony show. Nothing of what I do here is just symbolic or just for the giggles. There is a serious campaign being waged here. And the goal, uh, or rather the, 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 the purpose, if I can put it that way rather, is to build a broad coalition of South Africans, in particular South African families, regardless of race, regardless of class, regardless of income, a broad coalition of South African families who recognize the danger we're in, being led down a pathway of toxic and terrible ideas that do not build a property-earning, non-racial and free society, who recognize that, but now are wondering, what do we do? What do we do to actually begin to push back like, the ongoing creep, um, the creeping hand, sorry, <laughs> creep three times, the creeping hand of the state, and to push back against our politicians who really have shown themselves that they are wannabe authoritarians. So the question I've been getting a lot from people is, okay, Big Daddy, Big Daddy, we hear you, we, we support that homie, but what are you doing? What are you doing? To, um, what's the plan? Well, let's talk about that tonight. So I'm going to spend the next um, detailing to you um, the strategy. It's a two-pronged strategy. It has two distinct... Because as I always describe to people, we are literally... Or I see it, sorry, as literally going into a battle, a battle of ideas. And I've explained to you already what the battle of ideas theory posits, and I'll revisit it very quickly. South Africa is a society at the cusp and at the brink of disaster. We are at the brink of a total collapse of our institutions, what we know, and our families. We got here because of ideas, primarily, specifically bad ideas, by a gaggle of politicians who, in real terms, um, you know, from, from the very beginning of, you know, the, the very settling groups that came to this terra firma that we now call South Africa, um, from the very beginning to the various epochs and iterations of our history, how they've molded us into what they are today, 
We've never had a... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I heard a weird noise, the chopper flying really low. Um, whether you go back to the days of, you know, colonialism in this country, whether you go back to the days of, you know, our transitioning into apartheid and the, the, the then um, ushering of a so, so-called democratic dispensation, we've never been a free society. We've never been a society that actually is, as I like to describe, free, prosperous, um, non-racial and property earning. Even, by the way, to those of you who are now freaking out as I say this, even the current government, this, this gaggle, this, this, this toxic coalition of communists, socialists and race nationalists have never been the proponents of a truly free society. What we've had is a continuation in one form or the other of a previous dispensation view of things. Let me be precise and specific. Insofar as you have an ANC, which is um, uh, like, like, like terribly yoked to the ideas of identity politics and racial politics, who are terribly yoked to what we call statism, the idea of seeing the state or government <clears throat> as the primary means of organizing society, what I, what I often say is centre-left, right? Statism is often centre-left. Um, to actual leftist ideology, the uh, socialist and um, communist uh, um, inklings that we hear from our politicians, um, this has always been the bread and butter of how South African society has been organised. Now, compound that with our history, where South Africa, as, as, a, as a, a one unit, really, in real terms, isn't a, a natural country. It isn't. It's a compilation of different regions, different cultures, different peoples who may share uh, common values. Absolutely. They very much, very, very well may share common values. But the cultural differences are quite stark. But we've always had a singular centralized administration, a big, bulky centralized administration, which has sought to run this country um, with authoritarian vices to it. Whether you go back to colonial days, through apartheid, and even today. To the extent that, that that history that I've just condensed in two or three sentences has real ramifications, real ramifications for the declining quality of life for most South Africans because we're under the control of politicians who by nature, by nature, the nature of a politician is to number one, acquire power and number two, maintain power at all cost. Service delivery and the battle of ideas and even uh, the bettering of people's lives is secondary, if not incidental. A politician's primary goal is the acquisition and the retention of power. Now, the effects of that is you now have a society where politicians govern and run everything and seek to run more and more aspects of people's lives. And the very things that, that I argue are, are, are liberty, the very things that I argue um, should be our society fall by the wayside where our freedoms ever increasingly become whittled away and, 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 uh, and deteriorate. And that this, for me, has real-world consequences. Real-world consequences for people that I care about. And you've, you, you know exactly where I'm going with this. As I begin to refine, from setting out the problem, as I begin to refine where I'm going with this, these ter terrible ideas, this terrible way of organizing South African society has real-world consequences for South Africans as, as citizens, as individuals, and as families because it whittles away our ability to care for those who we actually love and, 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 um, and want to provide for. It erodes, for example. We don't see it, right, because it's a complex, complex um, network of decisions and blah, blah, blah. We don't see it, but we, we feel it. At, at the, we feel the outcomes of it. What do I mean? I mean in, in the sense that you have fathers and mothers in this country, heads of households, who are unable to provide for their family. And that's not from a lack of will, but rather it's from a, a, a complex system of terrible ideas concentrated in the echelons of power, concentrated in the echelons of government, concentrated in the echelons of mostly leftist politicians who then bear down on the individual, who bear down on families so that we are unable to make decisions about our own lives. And you see this. You see this in real-world ways. Take it beyond the lockdown. 
it's beyond the lockdown. Generally speaking, South Africans are ever increasingly not able to make decisions ab- about more aspects of their lives. Y'all not, y- y'all not hearing me? <laughs> let, let, let me let me take it back again. Let me take it back again, as I as I as I try and really set out the case for why action at this point is critically important because we cannot continue on this track rec- uh, track record. The most important in the, uh, the most important level of governance, if I can put it that way, in, in any society should be the individual who controls themselves, who says, I'm in charge of my body. What I do with my life is for me to make decisions for it, to bear the costs of that and to reap the benefits of it. That's the most important level. And closely linked to that, closely linked to that, in fact, almost, uh, almost a Siamese twin to that is the family, is the family unit. In whatever iteration it takes, you know, I, I, you know, it could be a nuclear family, it could be ukoko looking after twelve grandkids or whatever. Like we, 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 we tend to get lost in in what family should look like and forget that families, by, by nature, should be a loving environment where the best opportunities, the best resources are concentrated. And it's these two institutions which are taking a back seat to this wonderful. Fugazi, this wonderful, terrible show, wonderful, terrible, lol, um, to this terrible, let me just describe it as it is, show of um, politicians with more power, seeking power, and politicians who want to maintain power, and from that, wanting to be praised and worshipped as if they are gods. False idols as they are. But you have politicians in this country who almost insist on being praised and worshipped. And some of you do that. You, you, you literally at times even prostrate yourselves to celebrate and venerate these people, even as they destroy your very livelihood, even as they destroy your very rights to life, liberty, and property. And I'm saying to you, and Vlog 27, I think is where it was, I asked you, you've got to draw the line at some stage. At some point, if you are a liberty-minded, family-orientated, God-fearing, law-abiding South African, you've got to be able to say, at some stage, enough is enough. I'm drawing the line here. And once you've drawn that line, you need to take fellow South Africans by the hand who are like-minded, who share your values of wanting to preserve faith, flag, and family, who, who share your ideas of wanting to build a free, liberty-leaning, uh, prosperous, non-racial society. You need to take your fellow South African by the hand and say, come with me. This is how we fight back. This is how we push back. This is how we achieve what we want. So let's have that conversation. Let's have that con- uh, conversation. Um, so BDL, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, BDL? You, you've been talking all that good stuff. Uh, <laughs> surely there's a plan. We gave you time to think about it. Um, and the emotions have died down to an extent. You know, we, we're somewhat getting back to ourselves to an extent. Um, surely you have a rational plan going forward. Yes, I do. So let's talk about it. Number one. The BDL strategy over the next six months, five to six months, um, is as follows. There is going to be, like in any war, a air war or an air campaign and a ground war, a ground campaign. I'm going to begin with the air war because to me, it's about maybe, let's say, 40% of what I need to achieve. Um, the air war. The air war is exactly things like these. So... The point is to transmit my ideas to as many South Africans as possible over not only traditional media, but also social media spaces like these. So again, you'll see things like the Big Daddy Liberty Show, Late Nights with BDL, the vlogs. That stuff will continue. I will continue. I will I'll try to keep up with putting out regular content. And the two, by the way, will be linked. The two being the air war and the ground war. I'll get to that later. So... Definitely content out, making sure that you're seeing um, the ideas and also giving those who like to share my show, and God bless every single one of you, the opportunity to to share these ideas with people who maybe haven't been introduced to the BDL and the Liberty Bus. So this is critically important. So you will find me on all your social media platforms from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I will follow where um, people are literally are, where people's eyes are. But that's only a fraction, I suppose of what needs to happen in terms of the effectiveness of the air war. The effectiveness of the air war is me being able to actually reach audiences that don't engage in these sort of platforms. 
you know, in, engaging and reaching those South Africans who, who don't call in to talk radio, who don't have, you know, the data to watch um, episodes on YouTube and Facebook and the like. Um, people who don't write in to newspapers to be able to engage and read the ideas if I do put out any opinion pieces. So critically important in the air war is reaching those people who don't are not on these traditional media. So what am I going to do in that regard? The, pa- the plan is actually quite simple. <laughs> it's crudely simple. Prior to, prior to um, lockdown, in fact, the, the three days leading up to it, I had actually begun the journey, the task, if you will, of having this show, the Big Daddy Liberty Show, syndicated on community radio stations across the country. Simply put, um, you know, I, I literally was at a point where I was, at, I was on the Western Cape. Um, I was going to do it province by province, where I sit down with local radio stations, with community radio stations, and say, hey, guys, here's the show that has a different take on things, um, that views th- things uh, as a talk show through the lens of classical liberalism. It's the only show in the country that does that, by and large. How about it syndicates on your radio station once a week for an hour? Let's just trial it there for now. And literally give your audience, um, literally give your audience the opportunity to hear these ideas for the first time in, in, in many people's cases, but on a platform which is accessible to them. And community radio stations have arguably the, the widest reach. Outside of the SABC, the, the widest reach. Um, I mean, I'm talking about radio stations in parts of the country that you know are seen as flyover. Um, towns, flyover states, if you will. Um, you know, I, I already have a, an agreement um, with Vescas Radio um, in that part of the world, but, you know, and, and, and other radio stations have begun to reach out and say, hey, man, w- we're pretty keen to have you on um, our, our show because it's different. It's something different. So that's the, that's the, the major thrust, I think, of the air wall. It's the ability to not only grow this channel, but grow it into spaces where I'm not reaching people who are, quote-unquote, the converted. Um, because for as much as, you know, it's important for me to to keep engaging, refreshing people on issues of classical liberalism, liberalism and the ideas around it, of liberty, it's also very important that you reach spaces where people don't even know these ideas at all. People who, who only know their politics as being broadly leftist in nature. Those are the people who I'm targeting by the air war strategy in particular. In terms of its mass appeal, getting on local radio stations um, and particularly community radio stations, syndicating the BDL show so that the ideas reach, you know, some person sitting in Camus, Northern Cape, or some person sitting in Ofimbaba, Eastern Cape, need to be able to hear these ideas and even at times in their own language, which is why I strive to have shows that introduce uh, different languages, or at least guests who introduce different languages. I do my best to speak Afrikaans, which is, you know, outside of English, perhaps one of the more widely spoken languages, because English isn't, actually, to be honest, <laughs> which is ironic. But, but it actually isn't, to be honest. Anyway, I, I digress. The point is, um, there'll be more content in Isizulu, broadly Isinguni, being able to reach out to, to Swati speakers and Kosa speakers and being on radio stations that they consume information on. That's the strategy. And to do that, you know, it, it varies by radio stations. Some radio stations want you to pay um, to have a, 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 a slot on their, their radio stations, which is why um, building a war chest is critically important. I want to be able to have the means to do that, to be able to pay for space if they want to. Um, if they want uh, some form of payment. Others just say, hey, man, bring me some advertising and you can have some space on us. Others say, hey, we, we, we just want the content. So it's, it's the flexibility to be able to do all of this that strengthens the effectiveness of the air war. I repeat, and to recap, the air war by its very nature is mass dissemination of my ideas in traditional and non-traditional means. So social media, the you know, you'll get the Facebook, the Twitter, the blah, 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 and you'll get the YouTube channel. That's fantastic. But the real thrust of the air war is being on local community radio stations across the country, syndicating the BDL show, growing the audience. So that's the air war. That's what I'm going to be spending the next six months of my life, doing the admin work of getting onto various radio stations across the country. 
um, and growing the reach in that regard. So um, shout out, by the way, to radio stations that are already standing uh, and, and, and giving me a platform, Chai FM here in Johannesburg, as I said, Vescus Radio in the Western Cape, and um, Eden FM, who are, I'm in conversation with in the Western Cape. So shout out to all of them for even just giving me an ear and in these cases an opportunity. And hopefully there'll be more. So guys, that's the air war. I hope it makes sense. And I'm trying to keep an eye on comments. So if you see me looking down, I'm actually looking at your comments too. Um, and don't worry, I, I will give a full opportunity um, uh, for just engagement. If you want to ask me questions, if you want to make suggestions, there will be a full opportunity of that. So um, I've described the air war of what I'll be doing over the next six months. Which brings me, and I said the air war, by the way, is about 40% of what uh, the Liberty bus will be about, essentially. So what about the 60%? And you've heard me wax lyrical at times um, about the importance and the need of the ground war. Let me quickly set it out for you. The ground war is critically important, and that's why it will make up the vast majority of what I do. Oh, yikes, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me take two steps back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, the air war. The air war, the air war. There's, there's another critically important um, component. And this one for me is, is, it's the crux. It's the crux. The major importance of the air war is also the ability to tell South African stories. To tell South African stories from the perspective of, yes, the liberty lens, but also from the perspective um, of, of individuals and families in this country. So a lot of the content you'll be seeing on BDL, um, and I made mention of this, as I travel around the country, wherever I am, I will bring you visuals, I will bring you stories of people in that part of the world. Because there's one thing I want to do with my channel in particular, I want it to have eventually international appeal, where people get to see what's really happening in South Africa. Because at the moment, the outsiders looking in have a, an interpretation of what and who black South Africans are, for example. Um, and then they have an interpretation of who and what white South Africans are. And both of these are often, and politicians love that, they're, they're very divisive in, in, in how they portray South Africans. And very few, and I don't think anybody, takes the moment to actually tell South African stories in an authentic way. F let me be precise and specific. For instance, what do you know of a family in um, Kakamas, in the Northern Cape. What do you know about what they're experiencing at the moment? What do you know about their lived reality? What do we know about their openness to different ideas in terms of how we structure a society, how we structure our politics? We, we don't really know each other as South Africans. Like, we, we have a deep appreciation for each other, given, you know, what I, I always argue are the values that we share, love of our faith, you know, being a 97% Christian country um, and other faiths too, um, and the values we derive from our faith, which are very common, very common values. Our love of country, the idea that we may not agree on our politics, we may not agree on our government, um, but we love this country. We love this country. Take it from me. You'll be in some lounge or in some lobby or in some coffee shop somewhere, in Germany or Israel. And they'll hear me say something like, sorry guys, do you have any tomato sauce? And instinctively, true story, instinctively, some guy's face glows um, and says, excuse me, where are you from? And I say, hey, I'm from Johannesburg slash Durban. And he goes, Brur, I'm from Cape Town, my brother. And we start striking up a conversation in the middle of a lounge. <laughs> Job in, um, not Job, sorry, in Frankfurt. Again, emphasizing the fact that we seek each other as South Africans. We have a deep appreciation for each other because we understand, by and large, that we share a lot of common values. But I've always asked myself the question, why do we express that, that glee when we're overseas but not when we're here at home? And that's where the, the toxic nature of our politics comes into, into play and how the toxic nature of our politics prevents us from talking to each other, reaching out, understanding each other at times, knowing each other's stories. So the BDL show is going to play that critical role, I think, of telling South African stories. So outside of producing 
the Big Daddy Liberty Show, outside of producing late nights with BDL, outside of producing vlogs, I'm going to bring you stories of South Africans, short snippet interviews at times, of ordinary Platalanta Mensa, Abantunje, ordinary South Africans, short three minutes, a brief conversation with South Africans, going to be working, uh, I see you, Lord. Uh, Lord MO3R, I didn't want to say the M word. Uh, shout out from Kakamas. I see you, homie. I'll be in that part of the world relatively soon. Um, I was just saying, sorry. In addition to the, the various shows that I produce, I'm going to look to try and produce a, 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 a mini-series, a three-part mini-series, almost three one-hour episodes uh, in a documentary style titled Life, Liberty and Property where I look at these three areas in, the rela- in relation to South Africa, where under life, for example, the life episode, you might see a discussion, a, a look into how the education system fails South Africans. And in failing South Africans, basically relegates them to the life of poverty. Um, and then once they, they leave that, that shoddy education, how politicians get involved in the markets thereby crippling further the ability for an individual to build on their quality of life by finding that first job, etc. So essentially the, the life side will look at the, 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 complete, the complete story, if you will, of how our quality of life as South Africans is infringed and impugned by the political system that we follow. By looking at things like education, markets, um, looking at the effects of uh, terrible ideas like black economic empowerment, affirmative action, how these policies... Uh, although their intentions are said to be good, their actual outcomes are crippling the quality of life of South Africans. How the political elites in this country, through the policies that we see, of, of essentially state control of, of most command, of, excuse me, of state control and interference in markets, is distorting the ability of South Africans to build that income, to build those savings, to build, um, uh, rather, to then buy a, a, a better quality of life for themselves. So that, that, that'll be the sort of the life aspect of looking at life, liberty, and property. The liberty one of this three-part um, documentary will look at the issue of our freedoms, our various freedoms as South Africans, our liberties, if you will, the, the, the freedom to freely articulate yourself, to speak freely. Why is it in this country that we've created so perverse a, 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 a culture that a white South African can't even express themselves freely for risk of being called racist. Although we have free speech. Why is it that we've created a perverse system um, of, of limiting people's free speech that a black South African who differs from what the political elites think is called all sorts of names, from Uncle Tom to Kuhn to uh, I've been called a Kaffir by most people, um, uh, who call themselves blabbity blacks, or rather, people who actually are the blabbity blacks, um, freely use the, 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 the K-word on me. Um, they call me a house nigger and all these words. No white person's ever called me those things in this country. No, no white person's ever dared call me those things in this country. No white person's ever seen or positioned themselves to be my oppressor in terms of my freedoms. Yet you have these enforcers of... of uh, or rather, you have these enforcers who try and limit our freedoms from all camps, by the way, whether they're social justice whites or the blavity blacks who literally spend most of their time trying to police people's thoughts and, and freedoms and language. So I'm, I'm going to look at the, the, these, these various issues in the liberty part of the three-part miniseries. Remember, I said life, liberty, and property. The liberty one will look at these various freedoms. Um, our freedom of movement, for instance. But again, um, I'll get into that when, when I get to that point. And of, co- of course, of this three-part miniseries, there's the property element, which is a, critical import, uh, a critically important episode um, to, to cover. Because the property one is super important. In this country, it, it's unfortunately been boiled down to a race issue, but it really isn't. It really isn't. It's an issue of... Um, sorry, let me just quickly sort this out. Um, 
the liberty front, excuse me, the property front is our, our ability to be able to be secure in the country of our birth. To be able to say that my little piece of Africa, no matter how big or small it may be, my little piece of Africa is mine. I own it. And really, I also talk a lot about me owning something, but really ownership in this country takes the form of families in the sense that if I own something, um, I can bequeath it to my children. I get to decide the idea of secure property rights, secure and transferable property rights, secure in the sense that I have title to it, I own it, I can defend it, I can fence it off, which is a right, by the way, that's denied to millions of South Africans, particularly poor, poor black South Africans, dispossessed in, uh, during the, the previous regimes. Um, and of course, the ability to transfer it, the idea that I get to choose who gets it. That is, I, the owner, get to decide. Let me be precise and specific. For example, here's a story that most people don't hear. Why is it that most people who get um, RDP homes are never given a full title ownership to it? Why is that still controlled by the state? Why are we not handing over full title ownership? Why is the state, for example, if we're going to have this conversation about property rights, why is the state the largest owner of land in this country? That same state and its same politicians then stoking the race war between white and black South Africans. Oh, the whites are hoarding the land, they'll say. Oh, those evil whites. If only they could just give up their land, everything will be hunky-dory. Tell that to the Zimbabweans. But why are we not having these conversations through the lens of property rights and not through the lens um, of race, which is the distraction the politicians want? So I'm going to be having that conversation because the issue of property rights is critically important. It has rim, uh, ramifications. Wow, I've been using this word a lot. Um, but it has imtelela. Uh, what's imtelela in English? Um, ramifications, lol. <laughs> consequences, there we go. It has consequences for the quality of life of individuals. Look at our farmers in this country. Our farmers have become target number one for violence in, that, in, in rural parts of South Africa. So rural safety is a conversation around property rights where we fanned the flames, politicians at least, have fanned the flames of vilifying one group and suggesting that they are the impediment to, to what, is, what everybody wants, by the way, a, a good functional land restitution program Absolutely, we all want that. But we don't get that because politicians are far too preoccupied with prosecuting the idea of dividing people racially on these issues and not actually um, sorting out the issue of, hey man, how do we fix the issue of property rights? How do we give those who are dis dispossessed back um, either back land or an option for them to get uh, compensation for it? Which implicitly shatters the idea that we, anybody should support something like expropriation without compensation. I implicitly destroys that idea. So it's going to be those conversations that I we, we, we have in this three-part documentary. Sorry, I'm hoping you guys are keeping up with me in this one. Um, you know, um, of me trying to explain the importance of the air war. It's more than just, you know, the, the everyday shows that, that we're going to enjoy, um, especially as I bring you inside to the various places that I'll be, the various people that I'll talk to. But there's also going to be some hard... Um, uh, there's, going to, there's going to be some hard, or oh, I'm hoping it'll be hard. <laughs> uh, wow, well, I, like, I heard that the moment I said it, um, get your dirty minds out of the gutter. But th there's going to be some some fantastic content um, in this three part mini series slash documentary that I want to produce that can then go out into the rest of the world to say, actually, this is who South Africans really are, and these are the issues as we face them. Um, not through the lens of blavity blacks, not through the lens of social justice warrior whites, not through the lens of divisive politicians, but actually through the lens of how do you build a free, prosperous, property-earning and non-racial society. That, for me, will be a very powerful um, three-part miniseries slash documentary because it'll tell South African stories. It'll tell the story, as I said, because I was on the issue of property, of why our farmers have been made unfairly targets in this country of, of violence, of farm murders, why black South Africans who were dispossessed and placed on uh, communal land, why are they still not being allowed the ability to own that land that they now have lived on for generations? I, for example, have uh, a family plot that is over 30, 40, in excess of 50 hectares of land in KZN that we still don't own. And I must be self-critical in this one because the Ngonyama Trust 
is, is one of the major reasons for that. But I'm arguing that that conversation doesn't require me to, be, to vilify white South Africans or white farmers. It requires me to be realistic around saying, what is my impediment to property rights? And how do we reform that? How do we create... Okay, all right, all right. I think you guys understand where I'm going on. <laughs> um, I think you understand what, I, what, what I'm mentioning here. So that's the air wall, broadly. It's basically... It'll be a continuation of the regular shows that you, you've come to kind of now like, I think. Um, I'm trying to be modest. I know you guys really do like the shows. Um, you know, the BDL show, the vlogs, Late Nights with BDL, and then, of course, this three-part uh, docuseries that I want to do um, of life, liberty, and property rights. And, of course, syndicating the show on radio stations across the country. If I can build that over the next six months, or work, do some serious work in terms of the air wall in achieving as much of this as I possibly can, then I will be a happy chappy because I'm telling South African stories, I'm fighting for South Africans, I'm pushing ideas, quality ideas into society, and I'm pushing back against my opponents, which are the likes of your EFF, Blavity Black, Social Justice Whites, the, the broad coalition of the left in this country who dominate our political space. Someone has to fight back against them. And that fight back isn't me preaching to the converted, as I say. It's about me getting my hands dirty, rolling my sleeves up, and talking to people who are, essentially, I have to convince. For the, for the, for the sake of the future of the country, I have to convince. All right. Which brings me... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let me just quickly shout out to everybody here that I'm seeing throw some love my way. Um... Shout out to you, Cindy Pelsa. Thank you very much. I see your super chat, girl. Much love to you. Alistair Ruiz, uh, Ross, excuse me. I see your support. Um, I missed one, which came through from Jeff Bland. Hey, man. Shout out to you from all the way from Australia, dog. Um, beautiful part of the world. That. Um, thank you so much for your support, man. That is incredibly generous. Um, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Um, wow, guys. Thanks, guys. Like, ser seriously. Um, guys, remember, I'm just laying out the, the air wall on the ground where I'll give everybody a chance here to ask questions or spend time on this. Um, as I said, we're going to have a chat today. It's me and you. Um, but let me conclude with the ground wall. Remember I said to you, um, the air wall is about 40% of what I want to do. The ground wall is where it really is at. That is 60% of what I think should be my focus. Shout out to you, Yvonne. I see you, girl. Um, the ground wall is critically important because this is where the failure of those who hold my ideas, who err on the side of liberty, this has been our biggest failure. The idea that you can win over society without having met people, shaken hands, gotten to know names, um, and engaged people on a personal face-to-face, one-on-one, uh, personal level. Um, if you remember, I, I, I threw a bit of a dig at the um, the, the South African cap, uh, Capitalist Party. Love the guys, don't get me wrong. I love them, I know them uh, personally. But their biggest failure, great as their ideas are, was that they, they, they didn't take the time to meet South Africans, to actually do the groundwork of going out, shaking hands, kissing babies. Not that I'll be kissing babies. Um... But actually taking the moment to actually say, hey, man, this is who we are. We're not what our opponents tell you we are. Um, you know, we're not evil, sort of, there's that traditional 1950s image, isn't there, of, of the capitalist, if you will, you know, of fur co coats wearing and, and top hat, you know, sort of walking around grinding the face of the poor. Um, <laughs> um, you know, we're not that. We're ordinary people. We're ordinary people. And in us being ordinary people, we have these fantastic ideas that we want to spread. But you can only do that if you're going out and you're meeting people. Go to where people are. It's the reason why when, when I first linked up with the Institute of Race Relations, and shout out to the ILR, man, because they've been with me on this journey. And shout out to Dr. Franz Crenier, the CEO of the ILR. I literally... I wasn't even looking for a job with them. I just said, hey, man, this is what I'm, look I'm looking to do with my life. This is what I want to devote my life to, is going around, spreading these messages, and being a champion of liberty, fighting for South African families. And they instantly got it. They instantly got it. 
They instantly, instantly got it. And they said, dude, we'll back you. But I said to them, that, even at that very moment, because I've been with r and for about a year and a half, I said, even at the very beginning, I said, listen, this is not about me and it's not about the IRR. It's about South Africans. It's about actual South Africans um, rallying behind the Liberty bus, rallying behind Big Daddy Liberty. Not in some messianic way. I'm not a messiah. But more in terms of saying someone has to take the arrows. Someone has to take the flag. Someone has to go into the communities and do the groundwork to lay the path, if you will, for those who then will feel emboldened to say, actually, I'm not alone. If this guy can come and do this, I can also become an advocate for liberty in my community. I can stand for families. I can stand for the individual for a change. And that's my mission. And the ground war is rooted in that. And I want to be able to say in nearly every single town, Dorpi, informal settlement, um, you name it, rural part of the S- of SA, I want to be able to say that I know someone in that part of the world who's now become a liberty zealot, who's actually doing the groundwork in that community. I want to be able to say that in real terms. I want to be able to say that I've built a, a, a network, a coalition, as I like to call it, of South Africans, ordinary people, not the highfalutin academic types and, you know, <clears throat> they all have their place. But I actually want to be able to say, Oh, you mean so and so in Springbok, of so and so in Lepalale, or so and so in Secunda? I want to be able to say that. Why? Because I've taken the time to travel the length and breadth of the country, meeting people, sharing my ideas, growing this coalition of South Africans who've heard the ideas firsthand, loved them, became zealots, and are doing the work on the ground. If I can do that, guys. If I can do that, then I, I don't even know how to frame this uh, to give it the gravity it deserves. If I can do that, then I think I, I've gone a very long way to fighting against the bad ideas that have infiltrated and at times have, have created fiefdoms of certain communities. I would have done a, a big job in that regard. And this is why I keep saying that the ground war is absolutely critically important absolutely critically important. It is the mainstay, if you will, of what I seek to do. And the link, as I was mentioning, between the air war and the ground war is that wherever I'll be in the country, I will bring it to you on the show. I will bring it to you on the show. So that if I'm in Kimberley, you'll see, hey, Big Daddy was in Kimberley. Why? Because I'll be driving some sort of campaign. You might see me standing at a, a busy intersection with a sign saying socialism is cancer, <laughs> as I did in Sandton, or the ANC is a crime against humanity. And when, when people then stop and say, hey man, wh- why, why do you say that? I get a chance to engage people one-on-one, on the ground, share my ideas. If I'm invited out um, to a, a, a local stock fell, maybe an AGM of a stock fell, or an AGM of a, a shack dwellers association, happily, I want to happily be able to go there, have the means to get there, and address people, talk to people, share ideas, grow a culture of liberty amongst those people. That's really the work that, that involves the ground, the ground war. If you're in a part of the world, world, if you're in a part of South Africa and you want me to come out and have a chat, maybe it might just be you and your friends, maybe you and your neighborhood, invite PDL, I will come out and I'll chat. And it'll be more than just a, a, a chat. Part of what I want to do is to develop material, whether it's a leaflet, a little booklet, that, that literally has these ideas in the language that is accessible to people and be able to even do a blitz, a door-to-door in some communities and say, hey, my name is BDL. Don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you anything and I don't want your vote. I want to give you, if anything, these free ideas that you can engage in. And if you like them, follow the show. If you like them, listen on your local radio station. If you like them, here are my contact details. I'll happily come back and I'll do a little talk. I'll do a little workshop. Oh, excuse me, guys. I'm hoping people can see the, the power of that. I'm hoping people can see the power of that because South Africans are very receptive to someone who literally takes the time and respects them enough to say, hey, I'm here with you. Forget the world around me and around us. I'm here with you and I'm having this chat face to face. 
you've shaken my hand, you know exactly who I am. I don't know what's happening in the comments here, but I'm seeing text. And <laughs> guys, what's going on? Um, sorry. I <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe as I wrap up, um, that's what I want to do, guys. And that's what to to the 100 and I think, uh, what is it now? 100 and... Uh, wait, wait, hang on. Sorry, give me a moment, guys. I think 144 of you who are now Patreon subscribers, that is what you're supporting. That is what you're throwing, what I what I appreciate and what I respect as your hard-earned rands, dollars, but your hard-earned rands, that is what you're throwing, um, uh, you know, you're contributing rather, throwing, really. That's what you're contributing towards. I don't take you for granted, but this mission is a very serious one. I'm not, here to play games guys i'm not here to play games um because i love my country i i i i refuse to be in a position where you know i i i sit back and i say i i, I didn't do um yeah anyway i think yeah so to summate and to conclude the next six months of my life, and I say six months only because it's just the, a, 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 a time frame that I'm going to use to then reflect at the end of the six months. Because this is what I'm devoting my life to, if I'm to be brutally honest. If I'm to take a moment and actually just level with everybody. Um, I don't want to be a rich person. I don't want to be Saul Kersner. May his memory be a blessing. Um, I want to be someone who literally does this work with the view of helping sway my society, my country, away from the toxic ideas, away from being a failed state. I, I, I want to do the hard work that makes us become the Australia of Africa. Shout out to, to, <laughs> to Jeff. Or, or just actually, in reality, the South Africa of Africa. I want us to become a powerhouse, a great nation. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want us to become a free, prosperous non-racial, property-owning, and great nation, powerful nation, where we rebuild our society, where the vast majority of people are actually in the middle class and are not poor, relegated to the margins. A society where there's a very high quality of life, where we look after families in this country. We don't relegate them to the cold sheer winds and the wolves. A country where there's opportunity for everybody and no one gives a flying fudge about your race. Your race suddenly just becomes irrelevant. And what we focus on is building opportunity, an opportunity society, if anything. Who doesn't want that? I put it to you that I can have an argument with the best of lefties, and by just putting these ideas forward, I can even win them over. So this is what you're backing. This is who you're supporting. Um, I, I've never been pretentious to say I'll save the world, but this is my contribution to supporting South Africans because I've told you before, ooh, here comes that lump in my throat because I know what I'm about to talk about. <laughs> I've told you before, I love my country and I love South Africans. I love families. Like we, we often say a lot and it's used as a throwaway term, oh, I'll die for this, I'll die for that. But I don't think people understand how serious I am if when I say I'll die for South African families, for your prosperity, for your ability to live in a free society, for you to be able to look after your kids, I'm happy to lay my life down for that. That's going to be my life's work. That's my life's mission of making sure that people who I share the space with, that Hashem, or excuse me, that God has given us, people who I share the space with get to live a high quality of life. That for me and the prospect of that brings me more joy than anything else. And for those of you who are Jewish, you'll know that I, I draw a lot of my, my inspiration on this issue from the Baal Shem Tov, who talks about the need to be joyful and to spread joy in society. That is a, a strong philosophical motivator for me. My faith is very strong in me. And I often argue that it, it is in everybody else in this country, in the vast majority of us. That's why I keep talking about the faith the flag, and the family. Three things that actually are our values and three things that I argue are the, the, the binding glue that binds us as people. 
three things that I get incredibly emotional about, especially family. I used to post this quite a lot when I still lived in Durban. Um, one of the things I used to do, you know, when I didn't have, you know, when I was poorer, poorer, if I can put it that way, one of the things I used to like to do, and this will sound creepy, but bear with me, <laughs> is I would sometimes take my last few rands, take a taxi, go to a mall, and just sit on a bench in a mall, maybe with some ice cream or a, a, a can of, of, of um, Fanta. I love Fanta. Um, and I'll just sit on the bench and just watch the families. This is, this is, this is still in my, my student days. I'll sit on the bench and just watch the families as they stream in and out. And I'll look at them and I'll think, hey, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Yo, guys. <laughs> That was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I used to aspire. I used to aspire. I used to say, one day, I'll have a family. I used to say, one day, I'll have a family. And the same energy that I will invest in protecting them is the same energy I want to invest in protecting other South Africans who have families. Because for me, Wow, hang on. Ooh. I'm sorry. I'll tell you why I'm getting emotional. Wow. <laughs> Yo, okay. All right, I'm sorry about that, guys. I'll tell you why I'm getting emotional. Because... I think about what my mom went through and she's passed on. My mom was a single parent and she was physically handicapped. And she struggled to raise me. I won't lie. She struggled. For a while, we you know, we, we lived on her disability ground. But it was her attitude that showed me that there's more to life. Regardless of the struggle, she built a business because she was very ambitious and she was a very strong-willed person. And she built a business that literally provided for my family. It gave me the best opportunities that she could afford. And it was through her that I recognized that there are no limitations on you. Yes, there are things that you may be born with and things that you you know, realistically, um, you know, Hashem puts these things in your life for a reason. But my mom never allowed her disability to get in the way of providing for her family and her only child. And it's that same energy that I'm arguing I want to transmit into the rest of society because I've seen the power of, of, of family. I've seen the power of once you give someone an opportunity and they take it and they build on it, I've seen what it can do. It's transformative in its nature. It's powerful. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Yo, okay, I'm really sorry. Like, it's, it's, it's hard not to miss... It's hard not to miss someone like that. And the same values. It's critically important to me that I push them and I fight for them aggressively in the society that I call home. Because South Africa is my home. I have no other home. I don't have another passport. I don't have another passport. This, this is it for me. 
And I can't bear the thought of watching it slip and most importantly, it's affecting families. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I'm back. I'm back. Um... I think you actually may have lost me there for a moment, <laughs> if I'm to be brutally honest. But I am back, I think. Um, guys. Guys, you've got to love country. You've got to love family. And you've got to be rooted in, in your belief, in your, in your faith. And if those things, if those three things mean everything to you, Um, hey guys, I think I'm back and I'll just wait uh, for confirmation. <laughs> Yo, the timing of that, that break was, was maybe needed. Um, this thing's got a little too heavy for me. Um, I'm just going to give it a moment to see if I'm back properly. I'm going to just Keep an eye on the comments. Um, Galen Grassi says I'm back. Um, all right. Dave CSA says I'm back. Africa Connect. Can I help you with your connection? Email me, homie. My details are in the descriptor of the video. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, maybe maybe that's a sign I need to... Um, <laughs> maybe that's a sign I need to wrap it up. Um... And I'm sorry for becoming emotional because I, I've said this before on the show. It's a it's a big soft spot of mine. It's 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 my Achilles heel to an extent, my kryptonite. The the idea of family, it's super important to me. It it's the passion that drives me. It's the passion that drives me. And you know, I, I'm not going to be apologetic. I, maybe I shouldn't be, and I, and I'm not going to be apologetic because. If you're on the Liberty bus, then know this. And as I conclude, and I'll take questions, you're fighting for the ideas of liberty. You're fighting to build um, a free, prosperous, as I said, non-racial and property-owning society. And you're fighting with people who actually share your values, the values of faith, flag, and the family. Um, help me then. Help me, back me, get on the Liberty bus as I build that coalition of South Africans I always talk about who share my values but have never maybe been exposed to these ideas. Let me give these South Africans an alternative, a vision for what can be as we strive to build this nation. Nothing gets handed to you. You build a nation from the ground up. And I, I, I'm of the view that, guys, it's very possible we must be in it to fight this battle of ideas. That's my commitment. That's what I'm devoting my life to, to fight the battle of ideas and to win it. I want to be able to say that I had a small band of individuals with an idea and that we marched through the institutions of society and government and we changed them. 
And I want to be able to say to my kids, guys, here it is. It's for you now to take the baton and, and carry on with it. We've done the hard work. We've done the groundwork. It's up to you now to maintain and build on this. It's very possible, guys. It's very possible. I know we've been battered and bruised and shoved into our own little hookies, whether they're based on race or whatever. And we're, we're afraid now to reach out to each other. Because on the one hand, as I said, you might have the blabbity blacks who then label me an Uncle Tom, a coon, and all these things. Or you might have the social justice whites, the, the, the self-flagellating whites, who keep saying condescending things like, oh, we must be deferential towards blacks because of the past, blah, 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 blah. No, no. I want to build a coalition of South Africans, not of blacks, not of whites, not of Indians, not of coloreds, a coalition of South Africans who care deeply about their values, who want to, them to continue, who see each other as sharing values of faith, of flag, and of, of liberty, excuse me, faith, flag, and the family, and who then, on that basis, see the rationale and see the power of building a society based on liberty, based on freedoms, based on building prosperity, a market economy that provides for people, that creates wealth, not destroys it, not consumes it, as the politicians want, but actually creates wealth, raises living standards for South Africans. Let's beat the poverty trap. And the best way you do that is by ideas, by making sure that people see the value of ideas that actually build that kind of society. That's my mission. So the, the only question I want to leave you with is, will you join me? Will you be Team BDL? Will you stand with BDL? Hashtag. Will you live free? That's the question I want to leave you with. As you now understand the air wall, you understand the ground wall, and you understand that over the next six months, this is what I'll be doing. Everything that you see in this flat, not that you can see much, let's see here. You know, all these assets I'm going to sell. I'm going to sell them and I'm going to live on the road for the next six months. Sell them, of course, so that I can actually have the money to do all of this. Um, but essentially I'm going to be on the road and I'm going to be the champion for liberty. And as I always, as I always say to the other classical liberals who look down on me, I say I want to be the street fighter, <laughs> the street fighter for classical liberal, liberalism in this country, for actual ideas that build that prosperous, free, non-racial and liberty-leaning society, a property-owning society. It's very possible, guys. It's very possible. But I cannot do it without you. You are the key ingredient. When I say that I'm here to take your hand and literally march with you through the institutions of society, through the institutions of government, I mean that. It doesn't happen without you. So shout out to everybody, man, who's, who's, who's just supported me so far. I've seen phenomenal growth of... The channel, I've seen phenomenal growth of, of engagement. And I must say this maybe on here publicly. Let me apologize to those of you who've been complaining that I'm not returning emails, I'm not returning inboxes and the like. Guys, I kid you not, just over this last period, I've had in excess of a thousand emails and inboxes and DMs. Um, and I do try my level best to go through all of them, but I, I, it's, it's virtually impossible for me to respond timelessly on all of them, especially if people are like, hey, here's this issue, uh, respond, and then I'll come with another issue. Like it's, <laughs> um, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. But I'm hoping that as the funds grow, as people donate, as, as the, the war chest, I like to call it the war chest, as the war chest grows, I'll be able to start bringing on like, and have options to bring on people who can assist, and I can actually pay to have them on. For instance, already from what I have, I've started reaching out to people who will be editing the videos, for example, so that I don't have to do everything at once, um, which takes up the time, to be honest, that I can actually focus on content production and, and advocacy work in communities, and that things like editing, I can have people, a strong team behind me that can do that. Um, things like following up on emails and all that, I can have someone who can just work with me on that. So there's, there's a rationale here. There's a rationale behind all of this. And it's wholly thanks to you guys who are jumping on the Liberty Bus and are saying, homie, I'll throw a dollar your way. I'll throw two. 
Heck, some of you are throwing 25 a month. God bless every single one of you because you are part of that mission of building a free, liberty-leaning and market-orientated, free market-orientated society where we defend our rights to life, liberty and property. And on that basis, let me say thank you very much and start going into the questions and comments. I don't know if you guys... Um, again, I'm sorry for that little intermission. Um, it, it really was a network error. And maybe, thankfully, it happened at that time too because I was very overwhelmed. Um, topic of my mom was a very sensitive one for me. Um, but yeah. All right, guys. Let's see if there's any questions. Um, obviously, these are not in real time because there's a little bit of a lag, but I'll get, I'll get to as much as I see. Ryan Henry, uh, merch, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think with, 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 with the Patreon fund growing as it has, I can now actually begin to do things like that, you know, like start buying and printing T-shirts and, um, you know, stickers and stuff like that. Um, and more importantly, if I circle back to the ground war, um, th I want to also prioritize funding for developing the leaflets that I talk about um, that have information. So, for example, in very simple layman terms, what does it mean for a classically liberal society, for education, for example, for safety and security, for healthcare. Those are the ideas that I keep talking about. Um, if you go into my channel, um, there is a video I did where I did a talk at the University of Stellenbosch, where I basically break it down of what a liberty-leaning society does on these issues. So I want those ideas to be in like leaflets, pamphlets, that then allow people to be able to say, hey man, you, you laid the seed, you gave us your contact details. How about you come and address um, uh, our Khamean Scop, um, you know, meeting in a hall somewhere or a, a Stockwell AGM or whatever. Um, you want to build that culture of people being able to say, BDL is accessible. If you invite him, he comes um, to talk and speak and, and share his ideas. And the ideas are simple in layman's terms, nothing academic and highfalutin you want to be able to win people win their hearts and minds because they can situate themselves in living in a society that i envision that i describe to them so um to answer your question absolutely merch will be coming um uh, and quite soon in, th in that regard oh let me just see if you guys can see it uh here it is this is one of the t-shirts that i have envisioned um and i'll print more i'll print more uh, all right. Uh, Slip the shiv. Um, T-shirt regarding gun rights. Hey, man. Click, click, bang, bang. Uh, you know me. I love my guns. I'm all about that pew-pew society. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Let's see. What we do. Uh, BDL, do you think the black community needs more fathers in the house? Uh, that's a question from Martin Graham. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the greatest injustices that that's, that's been perpetuated by our history and continued by our current government is the breakup of the family unit, generally speaking. And yes, I know I always say that families can take any iteration, but I also do um, equally say that, you know, fathers need to take responsibility for their families. You cannot continue as we do. For example, I was raised by a single parent, and I know that women can do it and do do it, but it's, it's such an unfair burden to place on a woman. It's such an unfair bur burden to place on a woman. Um... Guys, I can see people sharing the wrong email address on here. Let me just quickly cl clarify. My email address is in the descriptor. It's actually bdl at bigdaddylibertyshow.com. It's not a Gmail account. Because um, I don't really read that one as, as often as, as I should. Um, so if you send to the Gmail one, you likely won't get a response quickly. Um, but if you send to bdl at uh, bigdaddylibertyshow.com, dot com um that one i watch and monitor on a day-to-day -day basis um let's see here katie van skalkweg what is happening with your taxi business and staff it's decimated absolutely decimated um like there, there only will be um we're only going to begin trading or working again this week um but guys, I think I reflect the reality of, of, of most entrepreneurs. It, it's been really bad. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm seeing a lot of buffering symbols. I hope this line is, is not giving up on me. Um, oh, dear. Uh, 
Sorry, guys, just a second. I want to check what's going on. I have switched. Oy vey. Um. All right, guys, my apologies if it's choppy. My apologies if you can't see anything. Um, but it should improve in, in a... Oh. <clears throat> Sorry guys um, I just want to make sure you, you're actually getting this And I'm not talking to the ether <laughs> um, oh, I'm seeing a lot of buffering I don't know what's going on tonight But the line is really bad um, Okay, let's see Maybe let me just start Um Quentin Nagal, Jordan C. Clay Peterson. <laughs> no, man, I revere Jordan Peterson. He's he's absolutely, wow. Um, I also studied psychology and, um, and, so, and sociology. And yeah, just Jordan Peterson is just, he's fantastic. All right, Hank Klopper, um, please try and get Colonel Chris White on your show. Very informative gentleman and great... African knowledge, sure. Um, if Chris White is watching, I don't know if he has his own show. Sorry, I'm not sure. Um, I'll check that out. Um, Z or Z, tell us about the keeper, Yamaka, and Yusuf Shalom. I see the connection, but would love to hear your reason. Uh, well, it's quite simple. Oh, hang on, guys. Oh. Just received a warning message for... Um, I have no idea what's going on tonight. Like, it's actually really frustrating, especially because this is the one show where I said we're going to have a chat, a proper, proper chat. Um, no. All right. I think I'm back. Oh, and then I see... And I see buffering symbol. Oh, it's going to frustrate me. All right. I'm going to continue. And if you lose me, just let me know in the comments, please. Um... Okay, the keeper. Um, so, I am someone who is um, looking. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm not sure if I'm still even on. So, if someone can just send me a quick message. Oh, okay, I see Seaton from Rain saying there's a buffering symbol. Uh, I'm gonna give it a moment to let it resolve. Oh, this is so frustrating. My goodness. Jack Spratt says I'm back. Um, all right. I'm going to continue. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Guys, this might be a sign that I need to wrap this up. <laughs> um... This actually might be a sign that I need to wrap this up. Oh. All right. I see all the comments saying that I'm on. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Um, and that it's freezing every now and then. I, I can see that, and I don't like it. Um, okay. Um, but, yeah, anyway, let me let me actually maybe look to, to conclude. Um Guys, this is the mission I'm on, and I'm really encouraging you guys to to jump on board here, because we share this home. Um, this is our home. Whether you're white and you're black, this is actually our home, and you should never feel. Uh, you should never feel, or rather, sorry, I got trapped by my own sentence construction there. Let me let me just rephrase that. You should never feel and believe what the politicians say, which is divisive in nature, which is designed to make you feel like an outsider, um, which is funny because they generally create a society of economic insiders and, and economic outsiders, but you should never feel politically that you're an outsider because you aren't. This is your home. What I'm putting to you is that we need to get into the fight. And this is going to be a, a difficult fight. It's going to be a long fight. 
Um, and it's going to be one which we need to literally, we, we need to win it. There, there is no, there's no two ways about it. We must win the battle of ideas. We need to push back against the toxic ideas of socialism and communism, which are literally destroying the very fabric of our society. We need to push back against this terrible notion that's being sold by politicians, that if you're black in this country, you are a victim of circumstance, and that you can't make it, and that you need to blame white people or white monopoly capital or what they call broadly whiteness. We need to defeat that idea, that race, um, that race baiting, if you will, we need to defeat the idea that if you're white in this country, that somehow you're a second-rate citizen, you're not allowed to speak on issues, and that somehow you're inherently racist. Um, we need to defeat that idea and defeat it for good. We need to defeat the idea that we can't be a society which, um, you know, whatever your view is on a ideal South Africa, that somehow we... we we need to be a society that, that is continuously suspicious of each other and that we need to stay in our little racial hookies. Um, we need to defeat that. And at the heart of what we do, um, and at the heart, sorry, of what we build is a society which literally we can, be, we can pass on to our children that is free, that is genuinely free, that is non-racial, that, that pays no credence at all to your race. Um, and focuses rather on providing an opportunity for you because you are a South African, because you live on this wonderful piece of earth that we call um, our home. And we need to build a society which um, is, is based on a strong, growing and prosperous economy, a market economy, not a closed, crony um, a socialist society, but an open society, one which actually accords people opportunities in a growing uh, market. People can find work. People can start businesses. People can grow income. People can build savings. And from those savings, they can uh, buy themselves a better quality of life and buy themselves better options, whether that's better health care, better safety and security, better um, education. That's what we need to be focusing on. And you can only do that if on the one hand, and I will... In terms of my contribution, a concerted effort to get these ideas and these messages out via the air wall, the social media, the YouTubing, um, the, the, the mini docu-series, the three-part docu-series that I want to do on life, liberty, and property, and of course, syndicating the show on community radio stations across the country. Um, that's critically important for me. Um, and that's the air wall, if I can just recap for you quickly. And I said to you that the air wall is hinged on the ability to get these ideas into spaces that they've never been in before. That's why getting onto local radio stations is critically important. Um, and your support in funding the BDL mission allows me to be able to, if I'm asked to pay for radio time, to pay for it on the spot, just to, to focus and thus then focus on actual ideas and pushing the ideas out. And then there's the ground wall, which I argued is 60% of what I want to do. Um, you know, I, 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 I kid you not when I say that I, I'm in the process of selling all my furniture and all the things basically which are make me sedentary in order to live a, a journeyman life, a, a nomadic life for the show going to um, parts of the country where I'm invited to, to preach, if you will, preach the word, lol, um, but to talk to South Africans on these ideas face-to-face. -face. I want to be able to say that South Africans know BDL. They actually know who that guy is. They've shaken his hand. They've, they've, they've engaged him on a face-to-face -face level, personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with the guy, and they heard his ideas at face value. They got a chance to interrogate me um, and, you know, um, excuse me. And from that, they were able to say, yeah, this guy's legit and his ideas we support, we're behind him. That is the only way you can take South Africans by the hand. It's to actually physically be in communities and do this work. So you're going to see my bucky. Um, I drive a <laughs> big bucky, black and branded. You're going to see the bucky in, in odd places, like in informal settlements, um, in the most rural parts of the country, in townships, in even leafy suburbia, because this is the work that I essentially wanted to be doing, the advocacy work, being on the ground, critically important, critically important. Um, and in and of itself, it will have a multi-pronged approach, multi-pronged approach, sorry. 
um, where there's people inviting me and saying, hey man, why don't you come and address this AGM or whatever, right? Um, or just, hey, why don't you come, we're hosting a braai, I've invited neighbours, come and talk to us and address us. Uh, dudes, I will come. No, I just call you guys dudes. That's very familiar with me. Um, but I'll come. Because that's what the battle of ideas is about. You prosecute it on the ground. You win people by literally marching through the institutions of society and government with an idea in order to change people and lead them into um, something which is truly special. So if, you're, if you hear this and you support it and you're as fired up as I am, because I'm just bottling up the, the excitement, I've, I've been told that I, I get too excitable on this channel, so I'm bottling it up now. Um, remember, I took that bottle earlier on. Let me open it up for a moment. Um, that bottle of excitement. If you're for this, and you understand the value of it, and you understand the power of what I'm trying to do, my contribution to building that society, then, guys, hop on the Liberty Bus. Back, back, BDL. Stand with BDL, hashtag. And let's do this. Because ultimately, I keep saying this, this is the only home you've got. At least I, it's the only home I have. And, guys, it is as simple as a single dollar a month um, I, I know that times are tough and I don't expect, and I, I'm grateful for those who give more, but you know, a single dollar a month will do it um, as I build a, a broad number of people who donate um, and who give to the show. Um, I know you, some of you have had difficulties, difficulties, oh, what's going on, with Patreon. I'll try and open up other means um, of donating. But the other thing you can do is support the Institute of Race Relations. They've backed me from from my day one of starting to do this. Um, and you can support the IOR equally um, by donating to them. A simple 90 rand a month, um, or what you can afford, to be honest, um, by becoming a friend of the IOR. Those are also funds that help me get to what I need to do. But guys, maybe on that note, um, and I see your comments, Roger Marks, BDL should have a QR code with a Bitcoin address or your Patreon account uh, in your videos. Sure, thank you very much. Um, I know a lot of you have been asking, you know, about uh, crypto. I, I, I'm, I'm talking to someone who's going to help me with that. Um, I see your comment, Kerry van Skalkveig, get a Zappa or Snap uh, Snap scan. Um, absolutely, guys, I'll, I'll work on all of that. I'll definitely work on all of that. Um, because as I said, it is these funds that go into the war chest that fund the Liberty Bus, that literally get me across the country. And I can assure you now, that bus is rolling on. That bus is rolling on. I don't care about the the flack that I take, the criticism, um, the barking from people on the side, especially from the blavity blacks and the social justice warriors and the lefties. Um, I'm here to take all of that flack because my mission is resolute. I know exactly what I'm doing and why I want to do it. So they can call me all the names that they can call me. They can try their level best to distract me and you know to try and throw me off. But... I've told you before, I stand for faith, the flag, and the family, and my ideas that I'll be stretching, sharing, excuse me, to the rest of South Africa are liberty-orientated. The idea that you build that freedom-loving, uh, free, prosperous, non-racial, and property-owning society, that's my mission. And all I have to end say to end this one is, will you join me? Will you be a part of the Liberty Bus? Guys, on that note, let me say thank you very much for uh, joining me on this podcast. A major shout out to guys like Jeff um, for, for for donating on here, the, the Super Chats. Guys, I really appreciate it. Much love to every single one of you. Um, look out for the podcast that comes out on a Friday, uh, out Back to Normalcy. Um, you'll see a lot more content uh, in, in regular inter intervals. So guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Big Daddy Liberty Show. I will uh, share this on the Facebook page also. Um, and yeah, as I said, I really appreciate every single one of you. Please get on the Liberty Bus. Donate a single dollar a month, um, as little as single, a single dollar a month on Patreon. And I will open up other ways of donating too. And I just see that I'm buffering. Um, oh yeah. I think you lost me there for a moment and you're going to lose me again. Um, but now, let me maybe end it over here. Guys, thank you very much. I appreciate this. Um, stand with BDL and 
on that glorious note, let me just make sure that I'm not buffering as I even say this. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm looking at myself freezing, jerk. Um, and by the way, let me just quickly also say this, guys. Thank you to those who already are supporters. I am literally wholly ind indebted to you guys for the support. So super appreciate that. Africa Connect, please email me um, and we'll get into chat. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, improving my internet. Guys, thank you so much. And on that wonderful note, remember, 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 never trust a commie.